even the number of characters. Do you never do you never end up in a situation where you kind of feel like, okay, I'm writing this play that has four characters, and I just have to chuck in this fifth one that has nothing to do in the play just because I have to use this actor? Det har jeg aldrig oplevet, at en nogle teater siger, at du må bruge fem skuespillere. Så uh, det er helt modsat, at uh, man uh, skriver et stykke med fem karakterer og så får man fire skuespillere. Det er næsten det er aldrig modsat. <laughs> I've uh, never experienced um, being told by a theater that you have to use five actors. Normally, it's the other way around. You write a piece for five, and then they sort of want you to use four or want you to go down. It's it's never been the other way around. But how do you deal with that then? If you uh, if you know that you're not going to have the number of actors to fit the number of parts. Nei, da må man finne på, og det er jo det som er fint med teater, at du kan uh, gjøre mye rart. Uh, dette her er jo en karakter, hvis du vil det. Mm. Så det er bare å begynne å snakke med den. <laughs> <laughs> well, in those situations, you just have to make something up. I mean, it's theater, you have a lot of freedoms. My fist couldn't be an actor, so you just have to talk to it. Um, this um, the the process of writing, you know, when you're working with it with a theater, do you do you normally have a dramaturg then attached to the project that that's your conversation partner or guide through the through the project? Ja, um, de store institutioner har jo dramaturger som följer projekten op, uh, men uh, de mindre institutioner har ofte ikke det. Men da har man jo gjerne en samtalepartner i teatersjefen, eller... Uh, man har jo gjerne en samtalepartner uansett, men... Uh, uh, hvis du spør hvor tett man egentlig jobber sammen, så vil jeg si at jeg har uh, egentlig opplevd veldig stor frihet uh, uh, på alt jeg har gjort, vil jeg si. Uh, det er hvor rammene er klare, men, uh, men hvor jeg er fri til å, å skape mitt eget innenfor det. Well, if you're asking about, uh, in terms of big theaters, there is often a dramaturg or somebody um, that does follow up. In smaller theaters, it tends to be the artistic director or some key the artistic um, personnel. But in terms of how tight or how close that collaboration is, I've experienced a great degree of freedom and, and space to de devise my work and, and write my pieces. So you don't, uh, do, do you use them actively? Do you, do you kind of... Um, see them as a resource for you if you have a dramaturg attached? Absolutely. Uh, og uh, jeg vil nok uh, gjerne utvikle materialet selv uh, og ganske fritt med mindre noen har noe innspill på et slags uh, tidlig synopsis så, så tar jeg selvfølgelig det ad notam. Absolutely, of course, but I, I do want to um, devise the synopsis or the plot very freely uh, on my own. Men uh, dramaturger har jo kjempegode poenger og, og innspill ofte igjen uh, på andre og tredje versjonen, uh, hvor man tighter det til. Dramaturgs very often have uh, very helpful comments or, or uh, bullet points for the second or third versions when you're starting to tighten it and then sort of shape it more. When, you, when you're writing um, uh, and, you, and you have to, you know, you're writing on your own, you want to write on your own, um, but at some point you've got to deliver this to somebody and, you, and of course you would like it to be of the highest possible quality when you hand over a, a piece of work, I, I assume. I think everybody wants that. But how do you know? How do you figure out whether what you've written is good or not? What are, do you have any... Yeah. How do you do that? Det har skjedd meg at jeg har levert fra meg noe jeg trodde var kjempebra, og så har det vist at det var det ikke. <laughs> det har absolutt skjedd meg, men um, jeg har også lært meg å tåle det veldig godt. Uh, etter hvert. Uh, det er ikke så farlig, rett og slett. It has uh, absolutely happened that I have delivered a piece that I thought was really good, and it turns out it wasn't. Um, but you learn to live with that. You learn to deal with it. And uh, I have. Men uh, jeg vil si at uh, nå har jeg en del års erfaring, og jeg vet omtrent uh, 
hva, hva jeg leverer fra meg. Sånn at, uh, men jeg kan også tåle å levere fra meg ting som er uh, ikke ferdig da. Mm. Uh, og få tilbakemelding på det. Er det ikke så farligt. <laughs> that being said, I, I have several years of experience, so I'm, I've, de- I've developed a good feel to sort of sense out when a piece is finished. However, I, uh, I do hand over pieces or, or deliver pieces that aren't necessarily finished and uh, I handle the feedback uh, quite well. It doesn't really matter that much. You know, you're talking about growing a thick skin, I guess. This is what we're talking about. And I think that, at least to, to me, I, I have this sort of romantic idea, perhaps, of the writer as being a very sensitive person, a sensitive being. Um, but from what you're saying, it sounds like the, the writer actually has to be very robust. Jeg vil ikke egentlig beskrive det som å ha bli hverken tykkhudet eller, eller å være veldig robust, men, men tvert imot å se på det man driver med som eh, noe som er i stadig utvikling. Så jeg trenger ikke å levere fra meg noe som er perfekt, fordi jeg jobber med profesjonelle mennesker, og vi, eh, det er ikke bare meg det henger på, liksom. I wouldn't necessarily describe it as being thick-skinned or robust um, because I view it more as something in progress. My work is always in progress and I'm surrounded by professional colleagues, so the setting is very much open to, to this. Are you ever afraid that when you hand over your work to a director or to some actors that they're going to take it apart and ruin it? Because I think that is a fear, at least of, of young writers and emerging writers. Yeah. Um, they're not going to understand you. <laughs> ja, det, det kan man være redd for. Og man kan være redd for at... Uh, ja, teatret har et litt ambivalent forhold til tekst og til dramatikere. Um, for de kan enten ha en litt overdreven respekt for tekst, men de kan også ha det motsatte, at de eh, stryker litt eh, fordi at de ikke umiddelbart eh, begriper eller forstår hva som var meningen med noe. Og den faren er selvfølgelig til stede. Yes, um, absolutely, but to me directors seem to have either an over-exaggerated respect for the text, or quite the opposite, where they tend to either cut something or we do something without fully understanding the intent of what was written. And that is, of course, um, that's a danger. Men uh, for att snakke om praksis, så opplever jeg egentlig sjelden det, altså. Jeg opplever mer at, uh, at både instruktører og skuespillere er blitt ganske flinke og vant til å være med på tekstutvikling. Og at de er uh, egentlig veldig med på tulle med ting og finne ut av ting. Det er, det er ikke så farlig, liksom. Hmm. In my experience, though, that never, that rarely happens to me. Um, I've more experienced situations where the director and the actors are more involved in developing the text and they, they play around with it, we have fun with it. We're also collaborating more 